Welcome electronic video guests to the outer limits of the trading card hobby TTM. Through the mail we seek to have the famous and the infamous sign the trading cards and photographs we send to them through the mail. Today we have 11 such specimens to examine. 11 trading card autograph request return specimens to examine. And we will be examining these specimens in minute detail. So if you like seeing envelopes being cut open, you've come to the right place. Sit back, relax, get ready to enjoy the fun presented to you from the worldwide YouTube video airfill. How about today? Today is happy NFL New Year Day. That is right. NFL Football National Football League kicks off tonight. Two-time Super Bowl champion Kansas City against John Harbaugh's Ravens. What a game. NFL season is back. We're going to take a look before we look at our TTMs. We're going to do our NFL preview, give you our picks of the week. What a fantastic video this is going to be. Hey, even to celebrate, <coughs> how about that? To celebrate NFL New Year's Day. No pick cards. We're not going to open any cards. Just going to give away a pack. Maybe you'll have better luck than me when you open this pack up. Some lucky winner is going to get a 2024 Panini Score a Treat 3 pack of football cards. Maybe you'll get some of these fantastic rookie cards like I did. Take a look at those beautiful cards. <laughs> We're going to give a winner. He can open up this pack in the privacy of their own home. Do do whatever they want to do with them. <laughs> so that's what we're going to give away. All the details later. going to be a little bit different contest. But we'll get into that after we do our TTMs and our NFL season preview. Before we start our NFL season preview, we had a college preview last week. We picked some college games. I hope you went with my advice and made some money. Let's see, how did I do last week? Five and one in my six games. Five wins, one loss. I only missed out on Notre Dame, Texas M. But I said, hey, here's my money game. Remember this? I'm not faking this. Go back and watch, watch the last video if you think I'm giving the old BS. I said, if you want to bet any of these games, you want to put money on it, take Miami. Take Miami over Florida. I guarantee a winner. <laughs> it wasn't even close. That's right. We picked five out of the six, including USC, Boston College, and we said Fresno State plus 21 and a half. They lost by 20. And of course, Jimson, <laughs> Jimson, Georgia easily covered over Clemson. Nice way to start out the season going 5 and 1. I hope you listened to me when I said get your big money on Miami. All right, so we had a great week picking college football. It is NFL New Year's Day. Let's do our season preview real quick. Hey, that's what I got. That's what I got for 2024 NFL. Take a look at this. I got all your division winners. and I got, hey, I got the divisions in correct order and the wild cards. AFC East, I'm taking Miami. I think Buffalo is beginning. I think they wish they <laughs> they missed their Super Bowl window. I think they're on their way down. I'm picking Buffalo to snag a wild card over the Jets. 
The Jets probably got the best defense. They got some good pieces on offense. I think Josh Allen in his prime will do just enough. Aaron Rodgers is washed up, of course, biggest phony in the NFL. I think Josh Rodgers can hold off the Jets one more season. So I'll pick Buffalo for a wild card over the Jets. It's going to be tight. But Miami, I think, will win the division. In the, and the uh, New England Patriots, do not surpri be surprised if they go 0-17. I think they're the worst team in the NFL. AFC North, I like Cincinnati. Uh, I think Joe Burrow being back will be enough to get them over Baltimore. I think Baltimore is going to slip down a notch this year. <clears throat> Again, they missed an opportunity last year when they blew that game to the Chiefs. They had them at home. They couldn't do it. I think there's going to be a bit of a hangover to take a little step down. I think Lamar uh, Jackson, I just don't think it's in him to get to the Super Bowl. I think they got just enough to get a wild card. Then you got Pittsburgh, and I'm looking for Cleveland to take a big step down. I'm just not a Deshaun Watson fan. I think his days, his best days are long over. Too many off-the-field issues wrecked his career. What a great quarterback he was at Clemson in his first couple of years at Houston, but it's all over for him. Uh, <laughs> just too many issues with his massage girls, and uh, his mind just ain't <laughs> just ain't right. It ain't what it used to be when he was at Clemson under Coach Dabo, Dabo Sweeney. All right, AFC South, Houston's a rising young team. I got to like them strong in this division. I think Jacksonville will get the wild card spot. And then we got Tennessee. And I'm uh, picking Indianapolis to have a big fall from last year because I just don't think Anthony Richardson's a good quarterback. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. If you disagree with me about any of these comments or picks, get them down in the comments if you let me know. Tell me if I'm way off base, you think, on any of these teams. And the AFC West, well, we got to go with the Chiefs again. And believe me, it's going to be tough for anybody to keep them from three-peating. they got Xavier Worthy now, that missing piece on their offense. They're going to be better than they were last year. And their defense was terrific. Now they got Worthy on offense. Look out. The rest of this, uh, Los Angeles and Denver, that's a tough to pick between the two. I'm going with Coach Harbaugh and, uh, with the Chargers. I think they'll finish second. Denver third. Denver, one of these two teams could surprise for a wild card. Going to be close. I'm not a believer in Las Vegas' quarterback situation. I got them last. Over in the NFC East, I'm going with the Cowboys. I think there's problems with the Eagles. I think their coach, <laughs> they, that team ended in disarray last year. There's talk that the quarterback and the coach don't get along. That is not good for the locker room. As many problems as the Cowboys have and getting the old Popeye Mike Zimmer in as their defensive coordinator. I got to like the Cowboys to win this division. Eagles second. In fact, I think they're going to fall off so much they won't even get a wild card. Then I'll take Washington over the Giants for third place. I'm a believer until I see otherwise in the Jaden Daniels hype. I think he'll do enough to get them ahead of the Giants. <clears throat> he could be wrong with these rookie quarterbacks. You never know. But uh, I always liked him at college, even when he was at Arizona State. Then we got the toughest division in pro football, the NFC North. I'm going with my Detroit Lions to win the division again. I think we got two wild card teams out of this division. Green Bay, I give them a slight edge over the Bears just because uh, of coaching. I think talent-wise, Chicago is right up there past Green Bay, but and they got great talent. They got a solid team. In fact, of all the teams the Lions played last year, the Bears impressed me the most man for man. The difference this year, they got rid of Justin Fields. Great talent, but not a quarterback. He caused you nightmares, but he'd end up losing the game for you anyway. Uh, they got rid of him. They're going to the rookie, Caleb Williams. The Bears got a great roster. 
good defense, a lot of pieces on offense. <laughs> I'm not a believer in their coach, though. That's why I give the edge. Green Bay's coaching is very good. I'm going to pick Green Bay for second, Chicago third. Of course, a lot of hinges on Caleb Williams. What if he flops? <laughs> and I'll tell you, Minnesota is the best last place team. It wouldn't shock me if they uh, rose up and got a wild card either. They got a great coach. In fact, I think Kevin O'Connell is one of the top five coaches in the NFL. Great offensive mastermind. That is a dangerous team too. Tough, tough division. Any one of these teams can beat any of the other teams. Great division. Should be a lot of great division games. But like I said, Detroit 1, Green Bay 2, Chicago 3. Worst coach in the division is on Chicago, but I think their talent. And unfortunately, Minnesota, they lost J.J. McCarthy, so they got to go with Sam Darnold. So I'm picking the Vikings for the basement. NFC South. I got to go with Kirk Cousins in Atlanta to edge out Tampa Bay. I think Carolina will move past New Orleans this year. New Orleans is another team. I think they got some problems with the head coach there. I think they're going to fall all the way down to the cellar. Then over here in the NFC West, very tough division also. Got the 49ers to edge the Rams, but I got the Rams getting a wild card. I think the Rams offense is going to go crazy this year. Of course, they got Stafford. Coop, uh, Coop, Cooper Cup is healthy all year to go at Nakua. And they got Blake Corum as their rookie running back. By the end of the year, I think he'll be their number one back. And I think he's going to tear up the NFL. Arizona is a rising team. I like that coach, Gannon. I think they're going to pass Seattle. I think Seattle, they got rookie head coach Mike McDonald. Uh, that's an interesting choice. Of course, he was a defensive coordinator at Michigan. He's not the. He's a great defensive coordinator, but... Uh, I wonder if he has the people skills to be a good head coach. It's going to be interesting to see. I like Arizona. They played hard last year uh, for this guy, Gannon, and I think uh, Kyler Murray will be just enough to get them ahead of Seattle. So those are my picks for the NFL. Let's go to our picks, <laughs> the games, the weekly games picks. Let's start with our college football picks. What do we got? I got uh, cat. Not a lot of college games this week. I gotta tell you, it was tough coming up with just a few games to comment on. And that's my gambling advice: don't bet just to bet. If there's no games, like last week, I saw six I liked. This week, I only see three games I like. If there's nothing there that grabs you, don't bet. Save your money. All right, what do I got? I got Cal plus twelve and a half at Auburn. Give me Auburn to blow them out. I am not a believer in Cal. I like Auburn's coach as a football coach. Some of the other stuff, who knows, but as a football coach, give me Auburn easily to blow out Cal. Here's my money game this week. Give me Iowa. Iowa minus two and a half over Iowa State. Give me that all day. I think Iowa's going to kick some tail this week. Cade McNamara shaking off the rust in the second half last week. Look, breathe some life into that Iowa offense. If they have even just an average offense with their defense, they are tough. I don't give Iowa State a chance. Like I picked Miami last week as my money game. I'm going Iowa this week. If you want to make some dollars, bet on the Hawkeyes. And then the big game of the week in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Texas Longhorns, a road favorite. And not only a road favorite, a huge road favorite. Texas rolling into Ann Arbor, home of the defending national champions. Seven and a half point favorite over the champs. Give me Michigan. I wouldn't pick, uh, on a pick em, I wouldn't pick Michigan to win the game. But I think they can keep it at least within a touchdown. I wouldn't be surprised if the final is something like 21-14 Texas. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if Michigan won the game anyway. But I'll take them with seven and a half points at home. Defending national champions Michigan on their home field. 
getting seven and a half. Give me Michigan. <laughs> All right. Then we got, let's see, what do we got for our NFL games of the week? I got the Chiefs minus three over Baltimore. I'm just not a, it's the difference is the quarterback. Got to go with Mahomes. I got Green Bay getting three at Phil, at, well, not at Philadelphia, in Brazil. Give me the Packers. They're a rising team. The Eagles are a falling team. <laughs> New England plus nine at Cincinnati. I'll take the Bengals to cover that. I think that's the worst team in the NFL. With or without Jamar Chase, I think they can still steamroll New England. Here's my NFL money game. I don't think this game's going to be close. I think Houston can easily cover the two and a half over Anthony Richardson and the Colts. And then give me the Cowboys getting points at Cleveland. Like I said, I'm not a believer in Deshaun Watson. I'll take the Cowboys. That's my picks of the week, my NFL preview. All right, folks, let's get us under some TTM action. A little bit later, we'll tell you how you could win this 2024 score a treat three pack. Maybe you can get you a Blake Corm or a J.J. McCarthy rookie card. Maybe you like some other players. I know they got Jaden Daniels in the set. They don't have all the quarterbacks. I think they got Bonex, Daniels, McCarthy. They got a Joe Milton, I think. But I don't think they have a Caleb Williams in there. But uh, they've got most of the top rookies, so... We'll tell you how you can win those, but hey, we got to look at some TTMs. It's going to be a long video. I know you're nervous and antsy already. Hopefully you popped your Ativan or Adderall and can get through this. All right, TTM number one coming to us from Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Let's see what we got for our first TTM. What's that in there? That feels actually a little stiff. That's not our note. There's our card. <laughs> oh, boy. You see that? Ain't no signature on that Jack Fisher 1969 Tops card. Oh, boy. Dear fans, thanks for writing to me over the years. Up until now, I've chosen not to sign very much mail sent to my home. Uh, recently, I partnered with a charity. <laughs> okay, to, to, no, to donate proceeds, future mail. All right, here's a $15, one baseball card, $15. And he says, thank you for being a fan. Here's your thanks. Send me $15 for the privilege of being my fan. Jack Fisher, 83 years old and the Newest inductee to the Hall of Shame, asking $15. A guy with a lifetime record of 86 wins and 139 losses. His most memorable accompl accomplishments in baseball are giving up home run balls. <laughs> he gave up a home run to Ted Williams, and Ted Williams' final at bat gave up Roger Maris' 60th home run. Gave up the first home run in Shea Stadium to Willie Stargell. So, <laughs> that's his, his big accomplishments for giving up home runs. So <laughs> he wants $15 to be his fan. Well, sorry, Mr. Fisher, we're going to pass. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. 83 years old and you haven't learned no life lessons. Very, very shameful, Mr. Jack Fisher. All right, well, hey, we ain't going to let that spoil NFL opening day. Let's go on to the next one. Hopefully we'll do better. Pensacola, Florida. Isn't that the hometown of old, uh, what was his name? Rucker? Was that, you know who that is? Is that Ruckman? I think that's Ruckman's hometown. If you know who Ruckman is... Put a comment in the comment field. I might send you a little bonus if you can tell me who Ruckman is and what his accomplishments was from Pensacola, Florida. All right, let me look at this card. Wow, man, I tell you what. 
this here uh, Scott Heeman card. I bet I sent this out close to two years ago. This beautiful 1992 Stadium Club card signed by 57-year-old Scott Heeman. Well, it's worth the wait because that came out nice. Look at that sweet old Stadium Club. First round draft pick, number 12 overall by the A's in 1986. He was in parts of seven seasons as the utility man, played every position except shortstop and pitcher. He had only 607 career at-bats. He had 217 with 12 home runs and 23 stolen bases. Scott Heeman. All right, let me see if he answered any questions on our note. All right, let's see what, he, what did I even ask so Scott Heeman. I say, you have any favorite teammates on those old A's teams? Ricky Henderson. Walt Weiss, Mike Borda, and Blankenship. Did you like playing for Tony La Russa? The best. All right, Mr. Heeman, thank you for answering those questions. Thank you for signing the Stadium Club card. It took about two years, but I'm glad to get it. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. All right, our next TTM is coming to us from, what does that say? Not sure what that is. Somewhere it's kind of a blurry, blurry, blurry stamp. We'll see who it is from Blurryville. What do we get from Blurryville, USA? Let's open it up and see. Oh, look at that. John Felsky, 1973 Tops rookie card. Very nice. He's now 82 years old. Check that out. Check out that old rookie card. John also plays first base. He toiled in the minor leagues for seven years before getting a brief call up for the Cubs in 1968. Then he did four more years in the minors before getting another call up in 72 and 73 with the Brewers. Backup catcher only had 104 career at-bats. He hit a feeble 135 with one home run. After his playing days, he got into coaching and managing, was the Phillies manager for two and a half years. He won 190 games and lost 194 as the manager of the Phillies. John Felsky. 82 years old. Thank you for signing your 1973 Tops rookie card. Outstanding. All right, what's next? This one's coming to us from Salt Lake City, Utah. All the way from Utah, Salt Lake City. Let's see what we got. Salt Lake City. What do we got? Oh, we got a custom art card. Is that a celebrity out in Utah? Oh, beautiful. Man, look at that. That came out fantastic. Lindsay Pulsifer, beautiful, beautiful. She's now 42 years old. I don't know if you remember, she started when... Uh, uh, Patrick Swayze's last TV show. She started with him a show called The Beast. And then the show that I know her from, True Blood. That's what you see here right here. She was on starting on season three of True, of True Blood. And she did a fantastic job. She also later had a very good role and did a great job on that uh, TV show Justified. So you might have seen her somewhere on one of these shows. Great young actress. Lindsay Pulsifer, thank you so much. That came out fantastic, didn't it? Old star of true blood, Lindsay Pulsifer, outstanding. That is a sweet-looking card. Really came out good. Thank you so much. All right, let's keep rolling along. NFL New Year's Day. This one here is coming to us. 
Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, California. Let's see what we got from Los Angeles, California. Oh, there's a little a note. Oh, we got a note stuck to our custom art card. We got a celebrity from Los Angeles. Oh, there's another one I've been waiting a little bit for. Sandra Knight. How about that? The card was so dark this time I wised up and left a little blank spot in there. And she called on and signed it beautifully. How about that? Sandra Knight, look at that. Sensational. She's now 84 years old, a 1950s and 1960s starlet. Her biggest picture was Thunder Row with Roger, <laughs> Roger, Robert Mitchum in 1958. But she's probably best remembered for her low-budget horror movies uh, from the 50s and 60s. Most famous, of course, being this one here, The Terror. Remember that? 1963, The Terror. Who's that co-star with her? She ended up marrying this guy, her co-star. You know who that is? Take a look. Can you identify that? Yes, sir. That is Jack Nicholson. The chemistry between the two was very, very good. They ended up getting married, had a had a daughter, I do believe. And of course, uh, marriage didn't last, but hey, I think they were married six or seven years. Very nice. Sandra Knight, <laughs> Mrs. Jack Nicholson. Thank you so much for signing this custom art card. Old 1950s and 60s starlet. How about that? Sandra Knight. And she put a little sticky note. Hi, Jeff. Thank you for your kind note. I guess that says best. There's something. Sandra. Well, thank you so much. God bless you. Appreciate you signing our custom art card. That came out great, didn't it? Sandra Knight. All right, let's keep going. We're doing great with our TTMs. <laughs> this next one here coming to us. All the way from Denver, Colorado. How about that? What do we got coming to us from Denver, Colorado? Let's cut this thing open and see what we got. Denver, Colorado. Let us look. What do we have from... Whoa, look at that one. That is a true... All-time, all-time superstar, one of the greatest basketball players that ever lived. Can you believe that? Look at that 1978-79 Topps card. Man, I still can't believe it. Check that out. Rick Barry. Rick's highest scoring NBA game, 64 points. Jeff, best wishes, Rick Barry. Man, oh man, he is one of the greatest that ever lived. Now, 80 years old, that is a true superstar and Hall of Famer. The only player to ever lead the NCAA, ABA, and NBA in points per game in a season. 1965 All-American at Miami. Number two overall pick in the 65 draft by the Warriors. Played 10 years in the NBA, four years in the ABA. Had one of the greatest seasons ever in 1975. Led the Warriors to the NBA title. Was the finals MVP. Eight-time NBA All-Star, four-time ABA All-Star. ABA champion in 1969. 1966 NBA Rookie of the Year, 1967 NBA Scoring Leader for his fantastic career, averaged 24.8 points, 6.7 rebounds, 4.9 assists, and 2 steals per game. How about that? Rick Barry. One of the greatest of the greats. 
Oh, boy, that is going to be tough to beat. That is going to be tough to beat. That is the best, I would say, this will be the best TTM we get today. How about that? Rick Berry, what do you think? Was our best TTM return uh, Rick Berry or getting this Jack Fisher and his $15 begging request? Shameless Jack Fisher begging for $15 at age 83 or 80-year-old Hall of Famer Rick Berry signing a trading card. How about that? I guess I'd vote for Rick Berry and a close one over Jack Fisher. Thank you. God bless you, Rick Berry. Really appreciate that. What a return that is. Unbelievable. Woo! Take a little break after that one, huh? Take a little break. Get a little mind control in here with some subliminal messaging. Woo! Rick Berry, how about that? If you liked it, you know what to do. How about that? Make sure you obey our mind control. Thank you very much. Man, oh man, you got to love that Rick Berry return. All right, what do we got? We still got a, what, few more to go. What do we got? One, two, about four more to go. Well, I got me another great basketball player. Not quite on the ranks of uh, Rick Berry, but a pretty darn good old player himself. Old Bob Nedelicki here from the Rio Grande District. I'm pretty sure he would sign this if he <laughs> he put his ASPCA. Look at that cute little mutt on there with his return address there. I'd be shocked if he didn't sign our card. Let us see what Mr. Bob Nedelicki got. We got our note back. Hopefully he answers some questions. Let's take a look at this old, look at that sweet ball card signed by Bob Nedelicki. Look at that. That came out beautiful. 1970, or uh, yeah, 1971, 72 tops rookie card. Bob now 82 years old, like I said. He was no Rick Barry, but hey, he played his college ball at Drake, became one of the ABA's best power forwards. Uh, a star on two Indiana Pacers ABA championship teams. Four-time All-Star, a member of the all-time ABA team. For his career, he averaged 16 points and 9 rebounds per game. He was no slouch. Remember this guy? One of the best power forwards in the ABA, Bob Nedelicki. Look at that sweet rookie card. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate you signing that. Uh, did he answer any questions on the note? Uh, let's see. I asked him, did you have any favorites, favorite teammates on the old Pacers team? What did that say? They were, what did that say? They were all great, he said. They were all great. And then what else I asked him? Who was the best player you ever played against? Roger Brown. How about that? Now that's a surprising answer. Roger Brown. Very good. Well, thank you, Mr. Nedelicki. Appreciate you answering that question and signing your rookie card. Man, that came out great, didn't it? Look at that beautiful signature. Beautiful. All right, now we got next. Feels like we got something a little extra. Is that our note in there, maybe? This in here's got some little kind of a razzmatazz on it, but we don't know where it's coming from. Let's cut it open to see. What is that in there? Is that, a, is that something besides my note? Oh, yeah, we got a, like a postcard in there. Or a pamphlet. Oh, we got us a little, looks like a gospel tract. Oh, Greg Brezina, best wishes. Look at that. He's got John 316 on there. Beautiful. Greg Brezina, sweet 1972 Tops rookie card. Check that out. Greg is one of, foot, uh, is one of six football playing brothers. 78 years old. Played his college ball at Houston. 
and so did four of his brothers. How about that? It was the Falcons' 11th round pick in 1968. Played linebacker for them for 12 years. Solid 12-year career. Finished his career with 26 sacks, 12 interceptions, 14 uh, fumble recoveries, 1969 Pro Bowler Greg Brezina. Thank you, sir, for signing your 1972 Topps rookie card. Look at this. He sent us a beautiful testimonial. When it's fourth down in your life, don't punt. Look at this. I'm going to hold that up there so you can freeze frame that and read it. This is probably going to tell you about how you can get your get your life back on track with Jesus Christ. How about that? Look at this. You can finish reading up there. Look at that. Presently, Greg is a speaker and biblical marriage and family counselor. He is executive director of Christian Families Today, a Christian discipleship counseling and training ministry, which he co-founded with his wife Connie in 1980. Scan that code. Go to the go to the website for more info. Look at that. Since trusting Jesus, God has given meaning to my life. I am significant because I am his child. He has also satisfied me with his love, joy, and peace in the midst of life's blessings and burdens. Burdens. You can have this greatest of all experience, too, by remembering when it's fourth down in your life, don't punt. Run to Jesus. If it's not fourth down in your life, please don't wait. Yeah, that's right. Don't wait. Don't wait till you hit absolute rock bottom. Because actually, you never quite do hit. There's always one more rock bottom waiting for you. Run to Christ right now. For whoever believes in him with their heart will not be disappointed. Greg Brezina, how about that? Really appreciate that. Beautiful pamphlet. Like I said, we're going to freeze frame it there for you. Hit the pause button and read that. There's probably somebody out there right now ain't feeling too good in their life. Maybe you always thought this was a bunch of hokum, this Jesus stuff. Remember something. The stuff you mainly see today in what we call the visible church, the people who are loudest about Jesus, but they say some things that maybe irritate you, they might not really be Christians. A lot of people who call themselves Christians, they don't know the gospel from a hole in the wall. But if you got something going on in your life, you're not feeling too good, you feel a little bit hopeless, down, I'll tell you what, just take a minute, freeze frame this, read it, consider it. Con uh, think about picking up a New Testament and reading what Jesus said. Don't, uh, don't go by what self proclaim Christians tell you. Crack open a New Testament and see what Jesus Christ said in his own words. A whole lot different than a lot of what so-called American Christianity has to say. So that's my little two cents. If somebody right now is seeing this saying, oh God, here we go again with this Jesus stuff, I bet you don't really know what Jesus said. So if you need a little lift, open a Bible and and uh, read for yourself what Jesus said, not somebody speaking for Jesus, what Jesus himself said. Thank you, Mr. Brezina, an ambassador for Christ. God bless you, sir. All right. Well, we still got, what, three to go? Oh, man, we got a lot of DTMs. There. This one here is coming to us from St. Paul, Minnesota. St. Paul, Minnesota. What in the world we got from St. Paul? We just had a gospel message, and now the town named after the Apostle Paul. Whoa! Well, what about that? For National Football League New Year's Day. I don't know what kind of pen Mr. All used. I prepped that card up pretty good, but the ink didn't really hold. But hey, that's all right. You can still see he signed it. Joe Alt, 2023 first Bowman card. Signed by the Chargers rookie, 
Two-time All-American at Our Lady. Chargers number one draft pick, number five overall. They're opening up against Vegas in a couple days. Good luck to you, young man. Thank you for signing your 2023 first Bowman Chrome card, Joe Alt. He took time out getting ready for the... I thought this might come back next offseason. He said, man, I got to get this signed before I play the... <laughs> get this sign in the mail before I play the Raiders in my first pro game. Joe Alt, well, thank you, sir. Legendary lineman at Our Lady. How about that? That is a great card to get on National Football League New Year's Day. How about that, Joe? Oh, that came out nice. Kind of a, I don't know what kind of pen that was, but you can see he signed it. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Good luck for Jim Harbaugh against the Raiders on Sunday. All right, we got something here coming to us. From Honolulu, Hawaii. Boy, what a video we got today. <laughs> what a video. Got some good stuff recorded. Oh, look at this rookie card. How about that? Star rookie, Todd Marinovich. Beautiful. That is a beautiful, beautiful card. That is his 1991 upper deck rookie card and that is a sharp looking card there he is in his usc uniform of course you guys remember the story on this guy what a story what a story what a life adventure he has had you talk about somebody after greg brazina on fourth down don't punt run to jesus here's a fella i think that uh, he waited until fourth down of course, you remember he was basically engineered from his birth by his fanatical father to be a quarterback. His dad, Marv, he had played in the NFL and then became a strength and conditioning coach with the Raiders. <laughs> now, when his wife was pregnant with Todd, he concocted a special diet for her. He started athletic training when Todd was a baby. <laughs> it's a really crazy story. It worked for a while. Uh, Marinovich was a great, great high school All-American quarterback, went to USC. In 1989, he was college freshman of the year. But in 1990, uh, things just started to fall apart. Uh, uh, he began, uh, I guess, a rebellion against the uh, his father's maniacal control of his life. He started doing uh, cocaine, drinking, smoking weed, all kinds of problems, uh, skipping classes. He fell way off, didn't play very well, got into a shouting match with head coach Larry Smith. Then he got arrested for cocaine possession. That was the end of his USC career, despite, <laughs> despite what you might call some red flags. The Raiders still made him their first-round pick in 1991. They picked him ahead of Brett Favre. Uh, but those substance abuse issues fouled him throughout his uh, rookie season in the NFL. They sent him to rehab in 1992. He used LSD so he could pass NFL drug tests, but his play on the field was not that good, unfortunately. More rehab, more failed drug tests. By 1994, he was out of football. His post-football life's been pretty colorful, too. In 2016, he was arrested. He was found naked and in, in, in possession of narcotics in a neighbor's backyard. Now, I do believe, that's why I mentioned Greg Brezina and running to Jesus. I do believe he's kind of turned his life around the last few years. Uh, I think he's kind of straightened himself out. I could be wrong. I believe I did read something. That's why I sent him this card. But uh, his NFL career, eight total games. He had 50.7 completion percentage, eight touchdowns, nine interceptions. The QB engineered from birth. What a story. I bet you, I wonder if you all remember that. Todd Marinovich. <laughs> he had a great freshman year. You know, he showed a lot of promise, but he said, you know what? I am. I got to break out of this. It's just too much. I want to live my own life, but unfortunately, 
Let's hope he ran to Jesus. I, I do believe he straightened out his life. Well, God bless him no matter what. Todd Marinovich, thank you for signing your rookie card. Well, we're down to our last TTM. Man, this has been a long video. This one here, our finale, our grand finale coming to us from Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis, Indiana. How about that? What do we got coming to us from Indianapolis? Whoa, how about that? We got another Our Lady star, Vegas Ferguson. Legendary Our Lady running back, 67 years old. These are his 1981 Topps rookie cards. Vegas is interested in computer programming. How about that? Of course, he helped Our Lady win the national title in 1977 with two touchdowns against Texas in the Cotton Bowl. 1979 All-American, Patriots first-round pick in 1980. Played four seasons in the NFL. Only one full season, though, his rookie year when he rushed for 818 of his career, 1,163 rushing yards. He had five rushing touchdowns in his career. Look at that, Vegas Ferguson. Thank you, sir. 67 years old. Signed two of these 1981 Topps rookie cards. Two of these? We don't need two of these. Let's Hey, let's throw that in. Let's throw in one of these Vegas Ferguson signed rookie cards. Sweeten the pot. We'll give you a Vegas Ferguson rookie card from Our Lady. And a three-pack of score, 2024 score retreat. How are you going to win these cards? Well, here's what you got to do. Remember something. We had our three college football picks. Let's put these back up on the board here. I said Auburn, Iowa, and Michigan were my picks. You think you know more about football than me? If I'm wrong, get down in the comments field. Get down into that comments field. Put a hashtag. Texas. Iowa State. Or Auburn. Or Cal, sorry. Put hashtag Texas. Or hashtag Iowa State. Or hashtag Cal. Which one of those games do you think I'm wrong on? You just pick the opposite of me. If you know more about it than me, we'll enter you in the contest. Whoever gets... Uh, whoever calls me out and tells me which game I'm wrong on. All the people who are correct will be entered for a random drawing. Get those comments by noon Saturday, 7 September. Get them in by, by noon, by kickoff time. I say these are the winners, but you're the experts. You know more than me. If I'm wrong, you go over here and put the hashtag and tell me who you think is going to win one of those games. You just got to beat me on one of them. If you're right, you'll be entered in the contest. If I'm right on all of these, hey, I keep the cards. Ain't no big deal. Fair is fair. <laughs> you understand the contest? I'm picking Auburn, Iowa, and Michigan. If I'm wrong, tell me which one I'm wrong on. Pick the other team with the hashtag. All right, should be simple enough. I've explained it a hundred times already. <laughs> just get it in there by noon Saturday. That is it. Boy, this is a long video. But hey, it's NFL New Year's Day. We had to do our preview show. <laughs> All right. And don't forget to get over here to Amazon.com and buy this book. Hey, I'll tell you what. This is like a longer version of when it's fourth down in your life, don't punt. I call that a, this book here a longer version of that. Tells you how to how to uh, get yourself kind of on track and what to do when you realize you screwed up. What do you do when you realize it's fourth down in your life? If you want a, a eye opening look at that graphic detail, if you're listen, if you're a snowflake or a crybaby, what do they call them? Don't buy it. But if you're at that point in your life where it's fourth down in your life and you want you want to you want to examine it. You're not afraid to look at it with your eyes wide open. You like that book. Get over to Amazon and buy it. 
Oh, I'm tired. That's a long video. I'm tired. I wish I could have done a better promo for my book, but just run out of gas. <laughs> I got to hit the stop button. And I'll tell you what, I'll be back again with some more in a couple of days. Until then, remember, enjoy the rest of your life.